even before the familiar telegraph key, came this first Morse instrument, whose spark set fire to the world of communication. Sure, Western Union was boots and saddles, the golden spike in the railroad tie, singing wires, and the growing pains of a great nation. But everybody knows that Commerce Western Union did a job. The telegraph wire tied the cattle markets of Kansas to the tables of the East, hitched the cotton mills of New England to the southern plantations and the New York cutting tables. Other methods of communication were slow and tedious. The telegraph was the only means of rapid communication. It was direct, it was fast. It kept pace with the nation's expanding frontiers. All late, what do you read? What do you read? All late, they're all late. What do you read? What's your paper, mister? Globe. Here you are. Hey, what's this, Joe? What's what? Bank pages. Where's the news? Huh? What do you know? They're all blank. Sorry, Joe. Uh, sorry, Joe's customer. It wouldn't have happened if we hadn't arranged it. There's plenty of news today, but it's still in the making. All right, madam, we'll send that out right away. I don't mean to be personal, sir, but congratulations. Oh, thanks. Did you mean to say whether these twins were boys or girls, sir? Hmm? Oh, how could I have forgotten that? They're boys. And you want this sent as a regular telegram, of course. Oh, sure. This is news. Well, who else would like to get the good news? Oh, this goes to about eight different people. I have a lot more writing to do here. That won't be necessary. You just put down your list of addresses, and we'll see that they all get the message. Oh, swell. <gasps> sure, Fred Brown, twins are news. Western Union is about to make it official. And while you think of all the people who should know about Alice and the twins, hundreds of other telegrams are being sent and received in other ways in the 10-block business area around you. High above the city, a busy executive receives a telegram by desk fax, a compact telegraph machine that operates by facsimile and brings message transmission right to his desk. He places his reply on a cylinder, and with a push of a button, the reply goes direct to Western Union in his own handwriting an ultra-modern telegraph method that is close to magic. Fifty stories down, Western Union serves another man whose job demands fast and accurate communication. Hello, Western Union. I'd like to send a telegram. Mr. J.L. Roberts, Tompkins Structural Steel Company, Templeton, Ohio. Construction here ahead of schedule. Urgent, you wire immediately. Earliest arrival, structural steel. While urgent words speed from an engineer to his home office, a steady flow of words flashes to Western Union from the communications room of a large business firm. A battery of teleprinters handles swiftly the mass of urgent detail behind the daily operations of a major business. To save time, to pack more hours into the day, to get on fast, orderly record the many details of a busy enterprise. No less important is telegraph service to the smaller business, whose need for rapid communications is well served by the familiar call box. At the turn of the handle, the summons arrives at the branch office recorded on tape. The experienced clerk knows at a glance where the call originated and dispatches a messenger to the customer who is telegraphing an order for a 20-ton crane and all the while, people come and go in the telegraph hub of the neighborhood. Say, how does this sound? Caught surprise shore leave in big town. 
Caught short of cash. Mm -hmm. 25 would help. Please telegraph care of Western Union. Thanks. Love to all, Bob. Great. All right. Thank you very much. And we'll rush these out right away. Good. Oh, and uh, good luck. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. That's Sunday. It's a typical day at Western Union. Behind the counter, the mechanical nerves of the system change words to holes on tape and the holes on tape to electrical impulses speeding over the wires. Here is the urgent order for the 20-ton crane. To the Western Union operator, impartially and impersonally sending an almost endless flow of words, the contrast between six-pound babies and 20-ton cranes passes by almost without notice. Now the operator starts the stork gram. A quick tap of the keyboard, and another, punch the key signals that will guide the message automatically to its destination. Now it's gone, already arriving at Syracuse. High-speed message center for the territory in which the telegram originated and a link in the chain of mechanized centers throughout the country. Good news travels fast, and with the speed of light, this good news, now in Syracuse, is automatically being flashed onward to St. Louis, message center for the delivery office, guided only by the two key signals punched in New York, swiftly, accurately, practically non-stop. Along with thousands of other telegrams coursing through these wires, flashing through in round-the-clock succession, and now, over the high-speed transmitter, the message appears before the operator in St. Louis on both printed and perforated tape. As it arrives, she notes the destination and click. With the push of a button, the words are on their way to Cumberland, Missouri. Here they are arriving in printed form, ready to be gummed down on the familiar yellow blank. A happy group of words, announcing a double blessing to waiting grandparents. Yes, sir. Twins, six pounds each. Alice doing fine. Think I'll recover. Love, Fred. It seems to take longer to tell than it takes to do this passage of a message by Western Union. And at the very same time we follow this message, the order for the 20-ton crane has reached its final destination. Preston, California, thousands of miles farther away. Reached it and already delivered. Because distance means nothing when it's at the end of a telegraph circuit. The sailor's request for shore leave money from Dad, gone. Off at the same time as the telegrams about six pound twins and 20 ton cranes. Delivered in Bassett, Maryland by one of Western Union's newest developments, Telecar. A modern message center on wheels, which receives telegrams by radio in facsimile while cruising in outlying areas. Virtually a telegraph center at the doorstep. And in less time than would be imagined, the sailor will have the money he wants through the speed magic of a telegraphic money order. This is the network of interconnecting high-speed message centers linking together the vast Western Union system from coast to coast. And from the great major message centers spring a multitude of connecting circuits directly linking thousands of towns and cities, large and small, throughout our country with this vast ultra-modern automatic telegraph system, the finest, fastest in the world. Yes, we call it Speedway for words. A speedway extending far and wide within our shores and even beyond, to and from any part of the globe. Meanwhile, a typical day continues, from babies to butter. Mac and Cumberland, the supermarket chain, wants 500 cases of butter now, at the market price now. Trained fingers fly over the keyboard. The tape flows and instantly the order is fed into the great automatic network. In a matter of minutes, the butter order is on the floor of a large produce exchange. Seventy million housewives are concerned with every move in this marketplace, for the price tags of the nation's grocery shelves are determined here. 500 cases, 95. 
The sale goes up on the big board. And over the Western Union circuits, the transaction flashes instantly to produce growers and shippers across the land. In every type of marketplace, from butter to bonds, Western Union records the nation's sense of values. To provide service to as many as possible, today's Western Union reaches the American people in different ways. Those in small communities may know Western Union service through its agencies and railway stations, like this, where a young lady sends a meet me telegram. The busy housewife, to send a greeting or congratulation message, may call for telegraph service and simply say, charge it to my phone, please. The hurried man who wants to talk away his telegram and get going sends a reservation telegram from a convenient direct coin box cabinet. The late traveler who finds his day too short for all his business telegraphs for a morning appointment, calling on Western Union at his hotel to work for him while he rests. And here the occasional user of telegrams who lives in communities away from the center of things knows the dependable local drugstore as Western Union's representation. To millions of sports fans, Western Union is the answer to what's the score? Wherever the bat cracks against the ball. Wherever gridiron greats collide. Wherever big time punches lie. Western Union is as much a part of the sports scene as the umpires and referees. Whatever the news, wherever it happens, Western Union speeds the story to its national press centers, serving the world's top newspapers with lightning fast reports geared to press deadlines. Wherever disaster strikes, Western Union is on the job to restore contact, bring word to and from the stricken, and marshal relief for the hungry and homeless. In scores of crises in the nation's history, the copper wires of Western Union have been worth their weight in gold. Of all the many places where Western Union serves the American people, it is perhaps here where representatives speak and act for 150 million citizens that Western Union serves the greatest number. In the Senate press room, correspondents compile the daily hard copy record of significant speeches, ballots, legislation, and committee action. Almost as soon as it happens, through on-the-spot facilities, Western Union delivers this record to front pages in the free world. But there are more than outgoing stories. Western Union in Washington is a funnel into which Americans pour their messages of support or protest to their leaders. The opinions of grassroots voters who rightly believe that the elected man is a public servant. When great issues are at stake, the people speak their minds in a flood of telegrams that may total tens of thousands in one 24-hour period. Through its high-speed centers and other facilities, Western Union stands ready to carry far greater traffic than the nation demands. One section of its system operates by microwave beam transmission. From towers like this in Washington, more than 2,000 telegrams can be sent and received simultaneously on a single radio beam, traveling with the speed of light through other towers strategically located along the route. How else does this Western Union of today serve? Specially designed private wire systems when there is a need for communications and volume, such as the private bank wire, interconnecting 188 banks in 54 cities, providing direct, immediate, and confidential communications for all banks on the network. Here is an outstanding example of modern telegraphy serving the nation's great industries. Yes, Western Union does more than serve the individual 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. At all times, this battery of teleprinters presents a permanent record of the origin and destination of every message exchanged over the private wire system. Contracts, confirmations, instructions, purchase orders, financial transactions. Not one detail has been left hanging in the air, filed in memory, or left to chance. It's all in black and white. In the Pentagon, brain center of America's military might, the permanent aspect of telegraphic communication conforms to the traditional demand of the military for realistic records. The Army and Air Force use private telegraph systems to coordinate their vast organizations operated by specially trained service personnel. 
theirs are among the greatest communication centers ever designed and serviced by Western Union. Hey, they're all here, they're all late. What do you read? They're all here, hey. Hey, what do you read? Hi, Joe. Hi. Yeah, that's more like it, Joe. It's got news, yeah. I can't figure out why that last edition was blank. A break, I guess. It's all there now, all right. The things that happen to people and the things that people made to happen. There's just one blank space in this edition of the paper, but that will be filled in the next edition because the story is happening right now. A reporter is taking notes in the research center of Western Union, and what he is looking at will make the story that will fill the last empty space in the newspaper. The story is a familiar one to Western Union, a new one to the reporter. It's the story of an endless search for improved facilities to serve the communications needs of America. The news peg of the story is one of the finds of that search. High-speed facsimile transmission and reception of both words and pictures. In a matter of seconds, 3,500 words are sent and received. Here is a look into the future of communications. A long way from the early key that clacked out dot and dash messages. Here is modern telegraphy at work, sending and receiving in facsimile, placing all of a vast system at the user's elbow. Here is telegraphy today, hurtling millions of words across thousands of miles, automatically, guided and controlled by the magic brain of an almost infallible system. Speeding messages to destinations with just the push of a button, to better serve America everywhere, to bring distant friends and business customers within arm's reach through the swiftness of the yellow blank. A long way from the old hand-to-hand -hand relay from point to point, slow and at the mercy of human error. Here is the thin white ribbon of words, unchangeable, accurate, moving the message it carries lightning fast. Visible transcript of the sender's thoughts, actual record of what has been said. Here is telegraphy on wheels, roaming the streets of outlying districts to bring telegraph service right to the front door. The radio beam tower and its amazing capacity of 2,000 telegrams at a time on a single radio beam. That's a long way from the one telegram on one wire of a century ago. From this telegraph center of the world, headquarters of Western Union in New York, comes a telegram, a telegram for America. Union is proud of its record through the first hundred years. A record of service and progress, which in the needs of today and plans for tomorrow, keeps pace with the tempo of a fast-moving age. <laughs>